The ethereal flicker of a filmy veil deep within the Marianas Trench rocks that glow with pastel shades of peach and mustard yellow, lit as though fired from within. It's not the fantasy of a fevered brain, but rather luminescence cast forth by chemical and molecular reactions, purely natural phenomenon that we will examine from a mineralogical perspective in the coming video. From a crystal collector's point of view, you, as a collector, will be astounded by what you learn and see. So to begin, we need to look at the overall concept that is neatly termed as luminescence. It encompasses a range of beautiful phenomenon. Luminescence refers to the emission of light by a substance that's not been heated. This phenomenon can be observed in a variety of materials including minerals and living organisms. The light's excitation wavelength is shortwave of higher energy and the fluorescence of phosphorescent wavelength is of a longer wavelength or lower energy. Specifically, in this discussion, we're looking at minerals. Broadly speaking, there are different types of luminescence in minerals, with fluorescence and phosphorescence being the two most commonly discussed. Both types of luminescence involve the absorption of energy and subsequent emission of light, but they differ significantly in their duration and the mechanisms involved. Fluorescence is the immediate emission of light upon exposure to an external energy source while phosphorescence involves a delayed emission that can last from seconds to hours or even longer. The following discussion will delve into these two types of luminescence, explain their differences and provide a closer look at how these phenomena manifest in specific minerals such as fluorite, calcite and scapolite. It is those minerals that we at Dark Star Crystal Mines most commonly encounter in a fluorescent sense. Here's Mark and I. Yeah, we're at the Bear, Bear Lake 2 claim with, uh, with our mining company here, Dark Star. Uh, as I pointed out, we try and do stuff respectfully, not chopping down trees, not using dynamite. Right now behind me, we're at the pre-dug appetite dig, as we call it. You can see maybe behind me, down the bottom into that hole, that's Mark. We've kind of come to a to an end and now Mark is going underneath the end. In other words, there's some chalk stones as you'd call them blocking the fissure. A night trip with UV light on our claim can lead us into an eerily glowing fissure that suggests an alien world. Fluorescence occurs when a mineral absorbs ultraviolet, UV or other high energy light and immediately re-emits that energy as visible light. The process begins when the minerals atoms or molecules are energized by photons from an external light source, causing electrons to jump to higher energy levels. Electrons, say for example with a fluorite, it's got shells of electrons outside the actual center of the atom. So the, your first shell has two electrons in it, second shell will have eight electrons in it. Point is, and I'm not sure which electrons move, but when you put that blue light on, onto the crystal, uh, the fluoride itself will take electrons and it will bump them up to a higher energy level because the blue light is high energy. Now it then at the same time is giving us back that light at a lower energy level. In other words reds and oranges as you saw with the scapolite. The phosphorescence it holds on to those atoms at a higher level for a certain amount of time and slowly gives them back to us. Now you're probably thinking those of you who are right into the science you're probably thinking well What's going on here, right? If we use high energy light to cause the atoms to move up and yet they come back at a lower energy level and give off lower energy light, we're losing energy and that can't happen. The point is a photon is also given off uh, just before the atoms come back down at that lower energy level. It's either they're going to last longer and the energy is dragged out for a longer period of time or it comes back immediately and you have to give off a photon to preserve the actual energy balance. This emission of light happens almost instantaneously and ceases the moment the external energy source is removed. Fluorescent minerals often display vivid and colorful emissions. The exact color depends on the chemical composition of the mineral and the specific wavelengths of energy that it absorbs and emits. Certain elements are known to enhance the effect. They are called activators. Examples of activating elements are manganese, chromium, and iron 3 plus and then there are the quenchers that resist activation examples would be copper nickel and iron 2 plus oh yeah 
let's get this. Oh. There's no tidy cats inside. No tidy cats, no cats in the box. Okay, so this is the unboxing. We gotta do this with some ceremony, brother. So you got this at, at the garage sale in Madoc, right? It's a random garage sale in Madoc. So, okay. Actually, it looks like it's a real random box too, eh? Yeah, you got all kinds of crap in what there. What do we got in there, man? We've got a we got a piece of appetite. Looks like there's some feldspar in there. Just lumps of crappy rock here, you know, that's... Yeah, it might not be crappy. Hold on a second here, it might not be okay, so crappy. Okay, yeah, on. okay. Hold on. There's a, that's a smoky quartz, that's smoky quartz with mica. So you've got mica on the top, smoky quartz on the bottom. Um, now you said there's some fluorescence that goes on here, right? Let's, let's check it out. Let's, oh, wow. That looks like a... That's scapolite. Uh, what, what is it? Scapolite? Scapolite. That's scapolite. Fantastic. Look at that, eh? Lovely. So the scapolite... Uh, this must be a mass, though, right? This is a... This is, yeah, it's mass. Yeah, because, I mean, the crystals that you find of the scapolite would be, you know, four-sided prisms, quite distinctive from our appetite. What's this? What do you got here? Uh, there's a lot of... I'll have to turn the light on and look at it. Yeah, there's a reddishness to okay, that. Yeah, that's organic. That's moss. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what moss. What is it? Moss of some sort. But Switch on the light. Do you mind know. switching on no, the light no, just yeah. so we can have a look? And... Oh, oh, straight away, that jumps out at me. Where do you think that's coming from? I'd say it's uh, pegmatite for sure, right? Look at the size of the smoky quartz crystals on top of it. Yeah, it's a nice feldspar. Oh, yeah, yeah, like a sort of a salmon-y colored feldspar with huge amounts of smoky quartz there. That's telling us that there's uh, radioactive around there. That's why the quartz goes smoky like that. That eh? tells me that's probably not from Madoc where, where I bought this. Okay, right, buddy. okay, it's probably somewhere further yeah, north. Yeah, eh? you would think. Phosphorescence, like fluorescence, involves the delayed emission of light after the excitation energy has been removed. When a mineral is exposed to UV or visible light, it absorbs energy, but in phosphorescent materials, the electrons involved in the excitation process do not immediately return to their ground states. Instead, the excited electrons temporarily become trapped in metastable states. Over time, the electrons will return to their lower energy states, gradually releasing the stored energy as visible light. This process can take anywhere from a few seconds to several hours, or even longer, depending on the material. Understanding that more energy cannot be given off than has been added, the glow of phosphorescence tends to be fainter than the immediate flash of fluorescence. No more energy can be given off than was added, but the balance can be maintained by a slower, fainter release. In the area of Bear Lake diggings, certain of the minerals that are found exhibit striking luminescent properties, and most prevalent amongst them are fluorite, calcite, and scapolite. And of course there's also sphalerite that we found in the Niagara Falls dollar stones. Each of these minerals exhibits either fluorescence, phosphorescence, or both and their luminescent behaviors can vary on their chemical composition, crystal structure, and the conditions under which they were examined. An example of this would be the fluorescence in calcite. With a zinc component, calcite's fluorescence will be green, but with manganese it will be red. The luminescent properties of calcite are well known and there's no shortage of this substance in the Bear Lake area. It is the primary infilling of local vein dikes and as crystals and mineral collectors can attest, in mass, calcite is somewhat unremarkable. But in its crystal spires and glowing with its fluorescent qualities, it's like the towers of a fantasy castle. Calcite, that is CaCO3, exhibits both fluorescence and phosphorescence, though its fluorescence tends to be weaker than that of fluorite. Calcite can fluoresce in various colors, including red, orange, and green under UV light. The mango peachy glow from the spiky specimens that we found near Shafi's locks is otherworldly. It is the presence of specific impurities such as manganese or uranium that gives calcites its special glow. Fluorite, CaF2, is one of the most well-known fluorescent minerals. Its properties were discovered by George Stokes in 1852, and it was this that led to the law of Stokes shift, or the basic mechanisms of fluorescence as we know it. 
The difference, and we're talking here, the difference in wavelengths between when a molecule absorbs light and when it emits the light. Fluorescent minerals are highly prized by crystal and mineral collectors for their vivid colors, which can range through the spectrum, depending on the trace elements in the crystal lattice. Some specimens show a strong glow when exposed to shortwave ultraviolet light. Amongst the most notable of Ontario's fluorites are those from the Rogers mine in Maydock. They appear as beautiful clumpy green crystals that fluoresce ethereal shades of violet, and when tumbled, that violet is interspaced with streaks of white fracture and ghostly floating images within the rock. Mustard planes also striate the innards of the bigger stumps, possibly from the contamination of its companion barite. Barite and celestite, a strontium ore, both contain rare earth elements, and these can accentuate the light show. Evolving from ocean brines, the two elements tend to back the fluorite crystals from Madoc area and the distinctive cross-hatching of barite with its europium and cerium are said to also appear as contaminants in the fluorite crystals. These two elements are responsible for fluorite's soft mauves and deep raspberry purples under ultraviolet light. Scapolite is a group of isomorphous silicate minerals. They exist along a continuum between meonite and marialite. Scapolites are said to be less commonly known for their luminescent properties, but the varieties that we are finding in the road cuts of Monmouth Township fluoresce an incredible yellow, reminiscent of glowing embers in a campfire. Local road cuttings are a good source of rough scapolite material. I believe by the fluorescent reactions that it is meonite that predominates. So in conclusion, luminescence in minerals, including fluorescence and phosphorescence, is a fascinating phenomenon that adds to the allure and scientific interest of certain species of minerals. Fluorite, calcite, and scapolite are just a few examples of minerals that exhibit these luminescent properties. But in a biological sense, there is also chemiluminescence, which is generated by a chemical reaction. This is commonly seen in fungi, fireflies, and deep sea creatures. I suppose a nightclub can sum it up quite succinctly. Glow sticks are giving their light by way of a chemical reaction. Two chemicals are mixed and they begin to glow. Light is not added to cause the effect. The body paints and glowing makeup on the various uh, celebrants in the nightclub are an example of fluorescence. Ultraviolet light is needed to trigger their properties and what is returned from the shortwave high energy excitation wavelengths are the longer wave low energy glows. Now the exit sign has a phosphorescence. Triggered by the light it glows for some time when the UV light has stopped exciting it. And so as the exit makes its glowing presence in the dark, so too do we at Dark Star Crystal Mines make our exit on this video. Be sure to visit our website and subscribe. We'll have local fluorescent minerals up for sale, including those amazing scapolites and peachy calcites.